Hello everyone, it's Father John Berry. Uh, welcome fifth grade for our lesson number five, page 45. And uh, I'm joined by my reliable partner for the last four <laughs> lessons, or maybe I'm, you're, I'm joined to you. <laughs> right? Hi, it's Mrs. Stever. Hi, boys and girls. We're going to have a great time learning about this new chapter, Great is the Lord Our God. So yes, Father Berry, let's yeah. together teach them and learn uh, some new things. That is great. And you know, um, there's a song, uh, how great is the Lord our God, how great is the Lord our God, how great, how great is the Lord. Those words have been put to so many different tunes. You know, great is the Lord, he is worthy and just. There's all kinds of songs that talk about how great God is. It's especially when people just get inspired, when people have something they just say, awesome, you know? Like, uh, if you ever have a chance to get to a scene like the one on page 45, if you ever get to be in a, in a scene like that, you just say, awesome. I had a youth group once, Mrs. Stever. Uh-huh. We went down a thing called Antietam Creek. We had inner tubes, big safe puffy inner tubes it said sun kissed on them bright orange okay <laughs> and it was after enough rain you know so the water was flowing and it was it was better than this it was deeper than this it, it was safe it wasn't like we were going to go down terrible rapids but it was moving us along wow. and we had a greatest time we did it many many times over um, i owned all these sun kissed <laughs> tubes we could take about you know 20 people uh, it was just great. Wow, I, it sounds wonderful. Yeah, I just felt it's great to be alive when I when I was on that trip, you know. Yeah, it's it is that whenever you're outdoors like that. I know um, we were able to take a trip up towards the New England states and the Great White Mountains, and uh, the waters up there were really nice. And just mm. you know, we didn't go on them, but when you hear it. You know, you just can kind of hear kind of the quiet oh, and then yeah. there's the water. It's, just to it's, walk along a trail yeah. like that or have a cabin next to the water. Right, it's just really you nice. You know, it's very nice. So we're going to say the prayer for this chapter. Okay. Okay, uh, at the top of the page, folks, I'd like you to pray along. Just pray pray with, uh, with us as we say, Sing, Sing to, to the Lord a new song. Sing, Sing to, to the Lord all the earth. earth. Blessed are you, Lord. God of, God of all creation. creation. Amen. Amen. So what is an image you would use to describe yourself? Well, I, first thing I would say is in, in times when I've been uh, like a youth leader mm -hmm. as a priest too, I feel like fun, you know? Yeah. I'm fun like a trampoline is fun, <laughs> you know? <laughs> You get trampoline out, <laughs> boing, boing, boing. That you know? is fun. Yeah, as you're long, right. You know, it's you're fun, right. You're you know? right. And I, I know I like I like to be fun um, when I'm out with people. So I'm like uh, I'm like Jello chocolate pudding. <laughs> you know, I, I like that. I I have some fun. I I I remember that in my family. Uh, Everybody liked Jello pudding, but there was always a little baby or a little tyke that was among us. Yeah. And they tried to eat the Jello pudding, and half of it was on their face, you know. <laughs> They're trying to learn how to eat with a spoon, you know. Uh, and they just fill. And then after a while, everybody starts laughing, you know. And my dad and mom didn't mind, you know, other kinds of food you couldn't throw around. But Jello pudding, it was okay if the kid made a mess. We <laughs> laughed, and the kid would make more of a mess. We'd laugh some more, and the giggling, you know. Oh, that sounds great, so, actually. It sounds so fun. I mean, I I think I, an image to describe myself is fun. If you, you know, I also have, of course, a serious side. And what what am I like? Um, uh, an image to describe myself. Get ready. I'm going to ask you, Mrs. Stever. I know. I'm getting I worried because I, I'm I feel like a flag man. You ever seen the people when they're doing road construction? Oh, and what way to go? And they they flag you down so you don't drive right through the hole they just put yes. in the road. You yes, know? yes, You're, yeah. Thank goodness so for them. They they yeah. kind of slow you down and they say hold it, you know, and they flag you into the right lane to get around, you know, the construction or the trouble or maybe a tree has fallen in there trying to move traffic around it. So I feel like I'm a flag man, you know, a person trying to guide people the way to go. That's what a priest does. Yes, yeah. You know? Gosh, these are all really good, Father. Yeah, That's... yeah, so the difference is I'm trying to guide them to God, not just around a tree or <laughs> not driving into a hole, you know. 
Uh, it's something more serious. So I have, of course, everybody I think knows my serious side because they see me in church acting like, you know, the guide, the person trying to guide us to God, right? Right, 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 right. Yeah. Right. Well, when I, I saw that, um, I was not thinking in the direction, but now you've gotten the, kind of the fun or whatever. So working with young people, we always have to have kind of pop corn because yeah. we always have these fun times of gathering and everybody always asks do we have some popcorn so I guess I always keep thinking on this image of making sure that we have something fun to eat so any type of like popcorn type snacks yeah um, and just going on just listening from you probably just an image of flowers because I just all the different types of flowers it just reminds me of just even all the different wonderful types of young people that we work with. And so, you know, just sunflower, maybe a sunflower just kind of slowly growing. Um, mm -hmm. So I like that. But on a serious, it would probably be more of um, an image of maybe just kind of reading like a teacher with a book or, or just a book yeah. of, um, yeah, the same type of thing where it would be kind of just the way of, of uh, definitely even like a, a book, maybe a Bible, you know, where I uh, just, you know, I, I read from the Bible daily for myself, just for my own faith. And I think it's just an image that, you know, comes to mind. So yeah, this, it's kind of fun to do that, isn't it? I wonder yeah. boys and girls, what kind of image you're thinking that you are, you know, maybe you immediately think of something that you really like to do an image, maybe if you're playing either baseball or soccer or, um, if you enjoy ice cream, that's your image. Or if you like mm -hmm. a certain Marvel hero, you know, that might be your image or something like that. So yeah, right. interesting, and, you know? Yeah. So, and they, you know, the image on the page there with the river is an oh, image of yeah. God. Like God has his images too, natural images. And then he has spiritual images that we're going to get into into this chapter, things that are true of God that, that you know, are very true of God. And we call them attributes, you know? And, uh, and one other image I think of is there's a guy that's running the Olympics, mm -hmm. you know, and he's won a lot. And when he wins, he uh, puts his fingers up in the air like a lightning bolt. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes. Track, right? He's a track, he's a track star, star, right? And he's track. from Jamaica, I think. That's right. Okay. Or the Bahamas. And yes. He, his name is actually a really cool name, Usain Bolt. Bolt, yeah. And Bolt, like lightning bolt, all right? And so an image to describe mm -hmm. him is he gives you the image. He he got like he, he says tells lightning you. bolt. After That's he right. wins the race, he becomes a he turns himself into a lightning bolt. He freezes like a statue. That's great. And, That's great. And I and I was thinking, yep. what images describe qualities of people? For example, we might say she's as fast as lightning. Okay. Yeah. That's so, right. So uh, look at the world. Creation helps us come to know God. So what image, you know, can we talk about when we talk of God? So. Let's go to page 46, and uh, Mrs. Stever, you can, can talk about some images of God that are unique to God that we can't say is true of us, but true certainly of God the Father, the Creator. Okay. Top of 46 is the word eternal. Uh, Mrs. Stever, I think that's what, uh, as we look at this river and listen to it, uh, you can, you know, God is a river ever flowing, just uh, continually continuing just flowing on like a river that never stops. I mean, the Potomac River has been flowing. All, all my life I've seen it go by and it just seems endless. And then it goes out into the ocean, the ocean keeps flowing and somehow the water it reminds us that God is eternal and he's left the signs of who he is down here in his creation. That is a beautiful image, Father, you're right. And one that, again, I think is just extremely calming and peaceful just to hear the waters it really is whenever you're just having a busy or a time just the waters god created for us so you're right okay boys and girls on page 46 at the top god the father the creator under our faith focus who has god revealed himself to be so we're going to learn just some of the the names or, or attributes of god and how God reveals himself to us. And then under the faith vocabulary, we're going to learn the attributes of God. Well, what are the attributes of God? 
They're the qualities of God that help us understand the mystery of God. So just like you talk about yourself and all the different things that make you, you, we're going to talk about the attributes of God and the mystery of God. And then Abba, 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 the name Jesus used for God, that Father, that reveals the love and trust that exist between Jesus, God the Son, and God the Father. So let's read together. I'll read out loud the words, and you follow along. God is a God of wonder and awe who has revealed himself. To help us understand who God has revealed himself to be, the inspired writers of the Bible have used certain qualities to describe him. These qualities are called attributes of God. Out of great and everlasting love, God has created us and revealed himself. God wants us to know, trust, and love him. Here are a few attributes God has revealed about himself. One, God is one. There is only one God. There is no one and nothing like him. Let's read the scripture in blue by Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God. The Lord is alone. Lord. God revealed the name YHWH to describe himself. The writers of the Bible used the name Adonai, or Lord, in a place of the divine and sacred. Almighty. God is almighty. This means that God alone can do anything. Let's read again in the blue from Scripture of Genesis, chapter 28, verse 3. God is almighty. This means that God alone can do anything. May God almighty bless you that you may become an assembly of peoples. Eternal. God is eternal. God always has been and always will be. God has no beginning and will have no end. Let's read in blue scripture. Isaiah 40, 28th verse. The Lord is the eternal God. Eternal. Holy. God is holy. The word holy means set apart. No one and no thing that God created is equal to him. Let's read the scriptures from Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. Love. God is love. God created and saved us to share in that love. Let's look at the scripture from John, chapter 4, verse 16. God is love and truth. God is truth. God is always faithful to his word. He always keeps his promises. Let's read in the blue from Scripture from the Bible, Psalm 33, verse 4. The Lord's words are true. That's a lot of attributes about God. All different ways to describe our God. What is your favorite attribute of God? Share with your family members if not right now, maybe this week. But out of these, which of the attributes do you like or you feel is a favorite to describe God? I like all of them, but if I was doing this activity, I think I would say love. 
just because everybody needs to feel that love and to be special. So I think God is love out of all these different attributes that they're all beautiful and wonderful. I'm going to give you a little bit of time to write down your favorite attribute, and then we'll have Father Barry talk about God the Father. One of the ways we identify God is just as Father. Even Jesus prayed a lot of times, Father. When he was speaking to the Father, he just said Father, because he was one of us, okay? And while he was also God the Son, he didn't say prayers to himself, hey, God the Son. He's, he would speak, because he's teaching us how to pray, to speak to the Father. So God has revealed himself most fully in Jesus Christ. Jesus spoke about God in many ways. Most of all, Jesus spoke about God the Father. Jesus had a very special name for God. He called God Abba, Abba, which means dear father or even dad. When people used the name Abba, they showed how close they were to their father and how much they loved and trusted him. So when Jesus called God Abba, he revealed how much he loved and trusted his Father in heaven. Jesus invited his disciples to love and trust God the Father as he did. He said, from the Bible, a quote from Matthew chapter 6, This is how you are to pray. Our Father. Our Father. So he said, not my Father, but he said our, because he was saying that He's joining the human race and all of us now can call God the Father because Jesus has invited us with him to have a relationship to the Father. Not without him, but with him. So it's our. And then Father. In uh, Spanish, you know, Padre Nuestro. So Padre, it's interesting. You know the word Padre. Uh, so it does mean dad, okay? It's a... Uh, it's a familiar term. It's just different. People were not used to having God talk that way. Hey, Padre, you know? But Padre, like if you were a kid and you had this fantastic dad and you're speaking to him, okay? Jesus revealed that his father is our father too. God the Father loves us and knows each of us by name. We are his children. When we call God Father, we are saying that we are all children of God. We believe and trust and love God, our Abba, our Father. Teresa Lusu is a saint that we're thinking about during this lesson. She uh, seemed to have a, a great connection to God the Father and recognizing him in the world. And part of it was that she had had a, a very loving father. Later, he became named the saint himself, Saint Louise Martin. And so St. Therese is one of those people who got comfortable using that title, and hopefully you can get comfortable too. I have another title of God that I like. Um, you know, there's Lord, there's Almighty, there's Eternal One, there's Holy God, Adonai, Truth, okay? A lot of different titles for God. What might be yours, or you might know a different one, like at Christmas time, God Hero, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, and it's a Christmas one that I particularly like. First, I'm gonna give you a chance to write and decorate your own favorite name for God, okay? So let's take a, a moment. I'm gonna put the picture up of Jesus talking to his disciples about how to pray. And while that's up on the screen, I'd like you to fill in the box of what might be a favorite name you have for God or, or just taking a name that you just learned about. Thank you. Okay, uh, I hope you had enough time to fill yours out. You can stop any time and take more uh, seconds to, to fill yours out. Or you can wait to the end of the lesson, but here's mine, uh, Emmanuel. Uh, there's a song we sing in Advent right into Christmas. Uh, o come, O come, Emmanuel. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel, and he did. Uh, God did come to Israel as promised. All through the Old Testament, there was a name that Emmanuel would come. And Emmanuel is a, it's a Jewish kind of a phrase. Emmanu means with. 
And El means God. El is an old, old name for God, E-L. And then Emanu, with us. So Emanu really means with or with us, with people, and El is God, so God with people. So the name Emmanuel is a special kind of a title that I like. It reminds me of Christmas. It also reminds me that God didn't just stay far away, unknown, up in some galaxy far, far away. He, he came down among us, with us, revealed himself. Emmanuel is spelled different ways, too, than the way I did in the book. So now we're ready to go to the next page, please. Page 48, folks. Page 48, God the Creator. There's a popular title you might have written, Creator, down as your word. Creation shows the great glory of God. God created the whole universe and all creatures, seen and unseen, out of nothing and without any help. Everyone and everything God created is good. God created people in his image and likeness. He created us with a body and a spiritual and immortal soul. This means our soul will never die. The writers of the Bible gave the names Adam and Eve to the first humans. Adam means really means man or first man, and Eve means out of. Adam and Eve, first humans, no matter the color of our skin, the life we live, the language we speak, we all belong to one family, the family of God. Now down below it says, illustrate a way you can show your respect for God and give him honor and glory. Well, after Adam and Eve and all the human beings, we have a way of, of showing glory to God. So what would be a way that, that you would give glory to God? Okay? Well, you can give glory to God with uh, excellent studies. You can exercise your mind and ability to learn and grow. And, you know, some people uh, would might draw themselves as a chef. You know, I know this guy, Mikey, uh, he's a chef in New York. He's his own restaurant. But I knew him back in sixth, seventh grade. Even back then, he started... Uh, making meals, making dishes, learning things. And eventually in high school, he started working in a restaurant, learning how to cook uh, certain creations. And, you know, another way you give glory to God is uh, uh, you can be uh, praying, you know. Uh, I know this one person that describes himself as an athlete that he likes to, he likes to run about four times a week he kind of runs for about an hour and he just does that and he, he does it as a as a prayer to God thanking God that he's given him you know the ability to to run and the ability to have a physical strength and and some athletic ability he likes running a lot he's on the long distance track team uh, think of uh, any of the many ways you can respect God uh, I have a person on the property here and he likes to do some of the yard work. He likes to do some of the gardening work. He knows that I don't particularly have the time or the green thumb for it, so he does it. He finds great happiness in seeing some things around here looking good because he did it, because he planted it. He planted some trees in particular uh, and some flowers in the places where it really needed something. So, uh, okay. So what I put down, Glory to God, I actually think of the song, Glory to God, and I think of playing it on the guitar. And uh, for many years, I played the guitar for a church. I was in a group where we played the guitar and sang. And so what I drew is uh, a guitar on that page. Now that's like a Martin guitar or a Takamini guitar. Those are two of the ones I have, uh, you know, six screen guitars. and. So when I play with other people who tend to be more talented than me, uh, uh, we, we still have a good time making music. I have a good talent for hearing harmonies in singing songs and, and sometimes just a ability to sing a song. So I think, uh, I think of uh, some people I played with that later I was in their wedding. Uh, one band I was in and I was in the wedding and all of us that were not, all of us that knew the guy who was a singer in our group, uh, he asked us to sing for his wedding. So we were up there, and one of the songs was Glory to God, because as you know, at wedding mass, you, you sing a Glory to God song. I also think of another guy uh, that I was already studying to be a priest, 
and he was getting married and he asked us to come uh, to a chapel and, and do a wedding. So it was actually uh, two of us that played and a young guy, uh, a young guy that we let him play the ukulele. <laughs> It was kind of a, a kid with a lot of talent. And the three of us played uh, for that wedding. Uh, those are times when I think we sang the Glory to God song that I still remember fondly. Now we're going to go to when, when you're not giving glory to God, uh, you're falling in disgrace. You're falling in sin. You're, you're kind of rebelling against God. And this is what we call uh, the original sin when Adam and Eve first did it. You can read right along with me, page 48. The idea is you're following the book with me, okay? Sadly, Adam and Eve were not satisfied with God's plan of goodness and holiness for them. They preferred their own way to God's plan and disobeyed God. The church calls their decision to live apart from God original sin. It is called original sin because it is the beginning of all evil and sin in the world. Original sin wounded everyone and everything God created. Each person is born sharing in the effects of original sin, and there is evil in the world. Despite original sin, God still invites and helps everyone to share in his goodness and love. He sent Jesus' his only son to redeem us and to restore our friendship with God. And one of the reasons why we get baptized is to turn things around, to let God's life live in us, and it's a, an effect of baptism is it wipes away original sin. That's why baptism is so important because then it washes clean our soul so that God can live in that soul in his forgiving grace. And then his Holy Spirit can come in too and begin to help us live like Christ. So that would be a blessing against instead of original sin. Blessing prayers. Okay, we go to the next page, 49, and... And uh, I was just outside blessing a dog just minutes ago when Mrs. Stever was talking on one of the other pages. I went outside, answered the door, and someone wanted me to bless their new doggy. And I did. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen around here in the church. So like this man in the picture on the top of 49, I was doing something like that. They said, don't get too close to him because he still nips at people. I didn't want to have my, him bite my hand. <laughs> but... You know, so that priest is out there with his stole on and his holy water bucket, but this dog is a little more friendly and his little boy that has brought him along. This was a, a couple from the parish, and they got a new dog because they had some sadness in their life recently, and they needed, you know, some fun and, and a new furry uh, four-legged friend in the house. And they have a nice yard for the dog, too, so they're excited. Blessing prayers. Blessings are one of the ways the church shows that we believe God, the creator, is always with his creation. He's always blessing us with his love. Blessing prayers remind us of this important truth about God. Catholics may uh, use many blessing prayers. First of all, we pray grace before and after meals. And that prayer is in the back of the book and I think we'll do it at the end of this lesson just to make sure you know that prayer although some people make their own up, which is fine. At the conclusion of Mass, we ask God to bless us. You know, you remember that part? We ask God's blessing on every newly married couple. There's a special nuptial blessing for them in the marriage rite. Some people ask for a blessing when they move into a new home or before they go off to college. Hey, I certainly know what those blessings are like. I... I recently was in a new home, blessing it, and and now uh, it's led me to make a new some new friends. In fact, they live along 200, and the walking trails there, and so now I can use those walking trails. And I know that there's a house nearby that I may drop in and say hello while I'm taking a long walk along that place. Okay? Catholics also bless religious objects such as medals, rosaries, and crucifixes. And again, this very morning uh, at our weekday Wednesday Mass, someone asked me to bless some objects like that. A priest's hands are blessed when we're made into a holy priest uh, for, for Jesus to use. He uses our hands 
so we can consecrate on the altar for the blessing of the bread and wine to be the body and blood of Christ, but also to bless people and to bless things. So, blessings. All our blessings remind us that God who knows and loves us each by name is always with us. This is the greatest good and blessing we could ever have. So you take a look and you see there's a priest doing a blessing over food. You'll see there's a family doing a blessing uh, at the start of their meal, the grace before meals. And uh, we see a blessing uh, and it looks like it's a, uh, it looks like some kind of a blessing, maybe a, a wedding. The priest is blessing someone and maybe the maid of honor. Okay, can't tell what the priest is doing there, but it's a blessing. It could be a confirmation uh, since he's wearing the red. Red is a confirmation color for a priest. Okay, so and then sacramentals are different than, um, than sacraments. The word sacramentals, the word that's on the top of the page there, that means the, those little things that you might have, like a medal, okay, a crucifix um, that is an object that reminds you of, of God and holiness. They're not sacraments, they're sacramentals. And blessings are probably the most important sacramentals of the church as an action um, because there is an action where something is asked to be holy now. Uh, I know I, I blessed a car recently, and the person asked me to bless a car because they said, when we drive, we want this to be a place, this car is God's car. It's not just my car, even though it's brand new and I love it. I want to drive it like I'm driving it for God, by God, with God. I said, that sounds like a good, good plan. Okay, now we're going to go to uh, What Difference Does Faith Make in My Life, page 50. All right, we've been talking about God in this whole chapter, mostly God the Father, you know, knowing him as God the Creator. And, you know, God the Father has been involved in our world in, in so many different ways, you know, and, you know, just exhibiting to us his power, his kindness, his creativity, uh, the uniqueness of things, the variety of things he likes to make. The oneness, the truth, the love, okay? Um, people and how he makes people and what he plans for people. So if you were to just to film like six different scenes of God making uh, the world in his image, what would you show? What would you show? And I'd like you to get started where it says, imagine you're a movie director. You're directing a movie entitled All About God. In this space, illustrate or write about a scene in that movie. Okay, so get started. Um, I'll give you a, an example. Okay. Um, I drew a big hand of God the Father reaching down in space. I have a moon up in the space. And then I, I drew a world. And I put down one world, that God is one, and God makes a world, a, a certain unity for all of us to live in one place. And everything is kind of governed by his, by his power, how it works. One world, okay? So that's what I put in the first of those frames. Those are called frames. In the old days, they, had, they would film, put film on sprockets, and those sprockets would go through the film projector, and it would film... Uh, all the images are flickering quickly in a movie projector. Now we have digital kind of cameras and, and film, and so it's done a little differently and a little more clearer than it used to be, a little more HD. But still, what would you put in your film? I'm going to give you a little more time now to do it, and then I'll show you something I drew up rather quickly. Now, I took about a minute or two to draw this up. I'm pretty quick at scribbling and coming up with ideas, so you may need longer. You just hit the pause button if you didn't get it done in the time I allotted you, okay? But the, you can see I drew the one world thing. So the God is the big hand reaching down, okay? And his thumb you can't see in the picture, but he's, he's like blessing the world and getting it started, okay? 
and then there's a uh, love is made so that you know god inspired love god is love himself he is love totally in father son and spirit uh god really isn't he we just say that uh as a way of defining but god is love maybe is an easier way to describe who god is but we are made for love and love is made so the world all of a sudden had love showered down so we could practice it i'm glad we can practice love and then i have the hand of god again making stuff uh, he made some trees you know there's some amazing tall trees when you go like i've been up in canada up in some of the the deep forests up there beautiful trees that have stood there for a long time the most amazing trees are out in california the redwood trees these guy uh, gigantic trees on the coast uh, just north of san francisco um, beautiful places to walk through and you feel kind of young <laughs> no matter how old you are you feel young compared to those trees family authored you know i have a family there of three and uh they're uh you know god made us and then he made us so that we could form into families and so there's a family uh kind of a new family getting started and then i had uh, dancing begun you know uh, so not just humans dance but i think there's a lot of creation that dances i think uh looking at dolphins swimming you know or porpoises they uh, they seem to be dancing in the water and enjoying how God made them. And then I I just been kidding around here a little bit. Chocolate invented, <laughs> okay. So um, with cocoa and and other ways for us to to have chocolate made. Um, I just ate some chocolate cake about a week ago. Someone in the parish made it for me. They made a homemade cake. Tasted great. Uh, I don't. They left me an entire cake so. Father Naba and I each had a slice, and then I uh, didn't know what to do with the other six slices because um, it's you know very rich. But we, uh, I had a little chocolate cake for breakfast uh, later in the week, <laughs> and then we tried to give away the other pieces that people might want to taste this wonderful cake. But chocolate was invented by God. You know, all the flavors and tastes in the world, hey. Okay, they all come really from the authorship of God, God who is maker and creator. So there we go. Now we're going to go to uh, our final prayer on page 51. On top of page 51, we do we pray, Lord, you alone are God. It's a prayer of praise here. You get the all part. I'll do the leader. It just reminds me of a song, too. I was thinking of songs from the beginning of the chapter, How Great Is Our God, and how that's a song that I know on guitar. And Gloria singing it, and this song here, um, I remember there's a song, you are mighty, you are worthy, you are loving, you are God, and then the, the guys would sing that, and the girls would echo, okay, you are mighty, you are mighty, you are worthy, you are worthy, you are loving, you are loving. Yes, you are God. Yes, you are God. And then the, that's how the song starts, and it goes for like five minutes. It's a praise song. So this is sort of what this prayer is here, um, just spoken. Okay, the leader says, God, you are Abba. And you say, Amen, you alone are God. God, you are most holy. Amen, you alone are God. God, you are love. Amen, you alone are God. God, you are one Lord, the Almighty One. Amen, you alone are God. We'd like to start and end our lessons in prayer, you know. First one was a reflective prayer. We just think of creation. Now we end with a formal prayer. So what did you get out of this lesson? Okay, well, the qualities of God, what is that? Take a look at that scrambled word there, terabusat. Okay, what word is that on scramble that is the qualities of God? That was kind of a few pages back when we got started. When we talk about describing God, we call that 
V starts with A T T. Okay, that would be uh, the attributes of God. Got that? Okay. Number two, the spiritual direction of the human person that never dies and lives forever. Can you fill that in? What do you think that is? It's a word that's luso, and you unscramble luso, and it it describes the thing in you that that keeps living. So you better hope you go to heaven because it'll be ha very happy there. Yes, that would be the soul. That would be the soul, okay? And then the sin committed by Adam and Eve. Okay, we have a name for that, an official name for that, the first, the first sin that kind of ruins things in the human race. But we, read, we can get saved out of it by baptism and start living the life of grace in God. What is that? It's not an allegory snee. Right, it is. That's right, I think you got it. Original sin. So write that in. Original sin. So we have done a, a, a nice lesson here, and uh, we'll have Mrs. Stever take us out with um, just a few things that might consider doing at home with your family. Our next lesson will be Jesus Christ, Son of God, Chapter 6. So we're, we're rolling along pretty good. So uh, let, us, let us give praise to God for this time we had together. It's always great to learn about God. I hope a few things I said or Mrs. Stever said opened up, you know, some thinking on your part. God's working in you. You're, uh, you're growing and you're moving fast, you know. Your mind is open to just learning so much and your heart is open to growing so much in love. Your body's developing, getting stronger, and you're, you're beginning to understand more about your gifts, your talents, your uniqueness, and hopefully too that, that you're made in God's likeness and he loves what he has made. And he has, a, he has a plan for your life and he has a plan for all our lives to kind of work together because he created us for his own happiness. God, I hope you're happy with us today. Amen.